Hi everybody, it's Jen. Uh, just updating you guys. Um, today I am CD11 and I started taking my new baby um, ovulation kit test um, yesterday, CD10. And um, I had, I think it's very adorable. And <laughs> the reason I say this is they're literally half the size of the one pose, which totally is hilarious and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this um, as far as size but they are super super tiny let me see if I can get my finger in there so you can see like I can barely even hold on to it but yeah but as you can see my test is already has a darker second line it's not positive yet but um they seem to work just fine. At first I was like, how am I going to see these tiny little lines on there? But you can definitely see them. So I think they're worth trying. Um, you know, I haven't gotten my positive yet on them, but I'm definitely getting some darker second lines. So that's super exciting. And it's only CD11, which that's awesome. Because on the one pose, I usually don't even have a second. Actually, I probably have a very, very faint second line. So that's super exciting. Um, and as far as my temps um, this month, they have gone back down to normal. Uh, they are not high like they were last month with being on nothing. So I am super excited about that. Um, they're falling right within the normal range that I would be at if I was on a medicated cycle. So I'm hoping that the soy did work in some way. Um, we shall see, hopefully soon. Um, but, yeah, so, otherwise, I'm feeling great. Um, I've definitely had some up and downs these last two days. So, I would assume that this is a soy thing because it was, um, actually like that when I was on Clomid. Um, but actually it was more of when I was on the pills than being off the pills. So, um, I don't know, the soy if the soy is just messing with me afterwards and I'm getting like an after effect. Um, but yeah, I've been an emotional roller coaster these last two days. And um, I, I can go from literally being fine um, and happy to being sad and crying my eyes out. And, um, you know, a lot. I, I'm under a lot of pressure and stress only because I don't have a job right now and um, we just bought a beautiful home and I want to feel that I have my self-worth again and it's been pretty strenuous trying to find a job. So, um, that being said, everything else is going pretty well. Um, I did want to mention that I caught a glimpse of Dr. Oz today, and I don't know if it was a rerun, um, but it was about um, when to get pregnant, the age um, when most women should really be thinking about getting pregnant, and um, the health risks that come with getting pregnant at an older age. Sorry. And um, I was playing with a marker, and the top just exploded. <laughs> That's not good. But anyways, uh, leave it for now. So this has been a major issue for me and it's a personal issue. Uh, not everybody has to feel what I feel, but um, when I turned 30, I freaked out. I guess I had the imaginary plan in my head that we all do when we're younger and planning our lives. Uh, I planned what year I wanted to get married. I planned um, when I wanted to have a child. Everything. <laughs> and, of course, it's not a perfect world and things don't happen the way we want it to all the time. So, um, I, I had hoped um, I had gotten married at 28 years old, um, which is considered back in the day, old. <laughs> 28 years old is old. Um, I am a child of six kids, and I am the youngest. So my parents um, are much older, and uh, they got married at 18 and had their first 
daughter by 19. So um, things have definitely changed in society. Um, nowadays, people are not getting married until their late 20s, early 30s. Some aren't getting married until their 40s. So as far as having children, it has changed drastically. Um, women also, when my parents were younger, and uh, were the stay-at-home moms and basically got out of high school and had children. And um, nowadays, women are very career-driven, and we want our careers, and we want our schooling, and we want, you know, we want it all. And um, and then we want children. So it's really based on choice. And uh, like I said, when I turned 30, I freaked out because um, I wanted a child. And I knew I had this condition, um, and um, right away before before our wedding, I had talked to my doctor and what what I needed to prepare myself for to have a child. Um, at 30, I got pregnant um, relatively quickly after I think it was our it was our second round of Clomid, and um, I had miscarried and. The miscarriage broke my heart um, in a way that, um, unless you have one, which I, I hope no one ever does, um, but uh, it it just, the emptiness you feel uh, afterwards and all the, the goals and the plans that you made for this little tiny person, um, for it not to come true. Um, you know, and then the fact that I had to come to grips with that I'm 30 years old and I'm not going to have my first child. I'm, you know, it, that was really tough for me. And here I am now, I'm 32 and going to be 33 years old. And I still have no baby. And my biological clock is ticking. I... I find it hard to not go through a day um, that I don't wake up thinking about having a baby and I don't go to bed um, without thinking about having a baby. So, I don't, it feels like desperation, um, but it isn't. And what it is, is the longing to have my own biological child. And they talked on Dr. Oz about, like, why is it so important for women to have a biological child? Why does it have to be biological? Why can't we use uh, donor eggs? And why can't we adopt? And, and it's not that we can't. It's the fact that we want to feel our baby growing inside us. We want to we wanna give birth. We want to do what women are supposed to be able to do. And, um, you know, it, it really affected me because, you know, they were so adamant on age and all these effects that happen after you're 40. And, and you know, it just gets worse from here, basically, is what they were saying. So start talking about having children that, at a young age and... Uh, try not to, like, they were going on both sides, like, how fertility treatment is dangerous, and, um, the side effects of it, and, yeah, there's side effects in everything, I mean, I can walk out my door and breathe the air, and it's hurting me in some way, you know, so, I don't know, I kind of took offense to that a little bit, and maybe I shouldn't have, but, um, if you're healthy enough and you can with you know you can have a pregnancy and and you know I, to me age doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter and especially with today's technology and some people aren't for technology and that's fine that's I'm fine with that your opinion's your opinion um, you know I plan to go all the way if I can if, it's more of a financial thing that my worry is uh, than it is of what I'm willing to risk or what I'm willing to do to myself or my body. Um, 
it's my body and if I choose to do whatever I choose with it, that's my choice. Uh, so, I don't know, it was just, it was odd. Like, all my feelings are so, <laughs> they're so in, like, a jar, <laughs> I guess you could say. I have so many mixed feelings. I have so many mixed feelings on the Dr. Oz show today. Um, and I just don't think that age matters. Uh, if you're healthy and you can produce a child, and um, I somewhat feel that my age that I am now, um, I'm more mature than I would have been at 18, 19, 20 years old, um, and I could probably take care of a child way better than I could have when I was 18, 19, or 20 years old, um, so yeah, I guess. I'm leaving you all and like puzzled, like what the hell are you talking about? But um ow. I guess it just it, it messed with me today, I guess, a little bit. So um anyways, I'm gonna stop there and stop rambling, but I hope everybody's doing well and I will talk to you hopefully when I get a positive on an ovulation test. So take care.